Welcome back to New Day. When Seattle college student Amanda Knox was on trial for murder in Italy, tabloids across the world were enthralled. The stories grew more and more salacious as details were released. Spun and in some cases just plain fabricated. Friends of Knox hired Seattle attorney Ann Bremner to help change the public's preconceived notions. In her new book, Justice in the Age of Judgment, it takes a look at the cases that have been tried on Twitter and TV before they even reach the courtroom and how that is changing the fundamental legal tenet of innocent until proven guilty. Anne is here with us now. Thank you so much. Thank and you. also congratulations. Mm -hmm. Number one in new releases mm -hmm. in media and law on Amazon. Yeah. That's exciting. So exciting. I'm just, my brother wrote it with me, so I'm going to give him credit, but we're, we're excited. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. talk about your brother, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. uh, he co-authored the book with mm -hmm. you, Dr. Drug, uh, Dr. Doug Brenner, Bremner. <laughs> yes. Wow, easy for me to say. Right. What is his area of expertise? He's a psychiatrist, but also PTSD. He's got a PhD in nuclear medicine, and he's written a number of books himself, but he's dealing with issues, in this case, memory, you know, yeah. witnesses, jurors, confirmation bias, mm -hmm. um, trauma, all those kinds of things. So it was great to write a book with him, and he majored in English here at UPS. Nice. So his first love was writing. I love that. So tell me about, for what you and your brother Doug think justice in the age of judgment means. Right now, politically, I mean, everything right now, everyone's so divided. It's really a divided era. But yeah. what it really means is confirmation bias. And that people, like, you see something, you make up your mind. Yes. And you just mm -hmm. don't change it, no matter what's out there. And I think that what this is, is how does our system survive if that's what's happening all around us? I don't know how right. the fundamentals of it can survive. I mean, mm -hmm. we saw this with the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard Oh, my case. gosh. I mean, in a <laughs> gross way. Yes. Yeah. It was almost, it was horrible fine to watch. It was so sad for both parties. You've covered a lot of high profile mm -hmm. cases in your time. You, many have had your own hand in. Mm -hmm. um, others, some you've just observed. Let's talk about a few of the how public judgment have maybe gotten in the way of these mm -hmm. cases. And we'll start with Amanda, pa uh, Amanda Knox. Oh, jeez. Because you were a big part of that. Yeah, well, it, I call it the cartwheels and kisses case. Because remember, they said she did a cartwheels at the police station and she kissed her boyfriend. Both weren't really true. I mean, mm. she did kiss her boyfriend. But it was basically like, was, how was she acting? Was she acting appropriately? I mean, mm -hmm. they said probable cause was based on going out for pizza, shopping for lingerie, kissing her boyfriend, her affect at the police station, and about Meredith, the victim. Yeah. And they admitted, the, the authorities, that mm -hmm. that was why they charged her. The prosecutor in the case, um, we said, you know, every day is Halloween to Mignini. I mean, everything to him was a satanic cult, and she was a temptress, right. and mm -hmm. he, he called her the she-devil. So those perceptions from the very beginning, you know, led in a bad beginning makes a bad end, they say. Right. It really did. But the perception of Amanda for years was a negative one. And it stemmed from basically closed hearings where salacious information was coming out, mm -hmm. and most of it wasn't true. And I don't think that the people watching in the United States maybe realize what Italian culture, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, know. you know, you think it's very strict. And like you said, mm -hmm. these images of her that were being put out there were not true. They weren't true. And, and, you know, the Roman system is great. It precedes ours. You know, ours is from Britain. Right. And they brought us the Renaissance in Italy. So I'm not really saying anything against Italy. This case, this prosecutor, he was prosecuted for abuse of office during her trial. During the trial. Right, and convicted. That's not good. No. <laughs> All right, Mary Kay Letourneau, you talk about that case in this book as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> there's something about Mary, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we had we had like an 11 week trial uh, here in Seattle, um, a civil case involving her and Billy Falau. There's so many different perceptions of that case. Mm. Even to this day, people say, is it a crime story? Is it a love story? Yeah. But we look back and we say he was 12, you know, yeah, going on 13. Line. Yeah, the yeah. bottom line is he was a child. But also, they survived the relationship all the time she was in prison. Nothing could keep them apart. They got married, and of course, she passed recently. Right. But it, it seemed to have worked out. We had a producer say, a Hollywood producer say, if you squint your eyes, it all makes sense. Oh, I mean, that's about as close as I could come during the case, right. you know, to explaining what happened. All right. Kyle Rittenhouse, this is something you watched very closely as the case went on. Mm -hmm. That was one where there was so much negative publicity about him mm -hmm. that it, sometimes the negative publicity can help a defendant. In a case like that, it was overwhelmingly against him. Right. And then when he got in the courtroom, the jurors heard a totally different story where it appeared to be self-defense all three times, all three counts, and they acquitted. He on the stand, he looked like he was suffering PTSD 
on the stand when he testified. And he was very convincing. And he, of course, he was acquitted. Wow. And you said it was because of all that, that I think so. flood, that deluge of negative press that, that kind of made the jurors go, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, you can't fool us. And think about what they heard in opening statements and everything else. They heard facts, not opinion, not mm -hmm. innuendo, not vilification, facts. And that's a lot of what we talk about in the book. You have to keep on the facts all through media on mm -hmm. a case and keep in mind that's what the jury's going to hear and as they come into the courtroom those things both go together. Right, so important. Mm -hmm. Susan Cox Powell, that is where a case where you represented her parents, right? I did and that was a tragic case where they're the father of the grand grandkids of um, Judy and Chuck Cox had basically come here, CPS was, took them into their care, custody and control, and they gave the kids to their dad who had murdered their mom, remember that, mm -hmm. and they were witnesses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he killed them yeah. with a hatchet and set, on, set the house on fire. That's an example in this book of where justice and media really work. Yeah. And I think it's such a sympathetic case. Everyone wants to find Susan. We still haven't. Yeah. But when it came to taking care of her children and they weren't taken care of, this jury during a pandemic had a hiatus of months and came back and reached a verdict in favor of the family for $115 million. Being part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah. You know, they also, they want to help change the system. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing that where the media with the jury um, justice was served, and I think in a very meaningful way that'll last for all of our lifetimes. You gave me the chills right then when you were speaking about it. You've also really made me think a lot about the next time I'm called to jury duty. Right. Um, you said a lot of the jurors almost make up their mind by opening arguments. Right. There's, there's studies and, and statements out there that jurors make up their minds in opening statement. 80% of jurors. Mm -hmm. This is a statement out there. There's not a lot of research underneath it, but it's accepted mm -hmm. in the profession. And, and so they make up their minds, 80%, and they never change. Like, they filter all of the evidence in the trial mm -hmm. through what they decided in the opening statement, which yeah. is why we always see you've got to hit a home run in opening statement. <laughs> right. You've really got to capture the hearts and minds of the jurors. But that just that fact alone, that confirmation bias, 80%, wow. they're going to filter what they hear until the very end of the case. That's unbelievable. What is the takeaway you'd like people to get from reading your book? Well, that our justice system matters, mm -hmm. and it's under assault, but not in the way we usually think. Right. It's under assault by our systems, the internet, uh, social media, uh, media, and Gertrude Stein had a great quote, everyone gets so much information every day that they lose their common sense. We're bombarded by so much information that we take little bits and pieces maybe of cases and make up our minds. But we've got to understand what happens in the courtroom is the most important thing. And finally, you know, Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird, yes. I just saw it recently, it's wonderful. He said, the only place we're created equals in a courtroom. You can have people that are poppers, there can be Rockefellers, some women, he said, bake better pies. You know, some people are smarter than others. We're not created equal, I mean, except for when we're in a courtroom. Right. And that's where we need to get back to that and understand yeah. that when we make these assumptions or we have these conversations, it may not be right. You know, and yeah. to, to really let the system work and, and keep innocent until proven guilty a tenant that means something. Well, we should send this book to every single media outlet. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> right, right, right. And thank you so much. Congratulations thank you. Thank you. on the already success of this book. We will hope to talk to you again very soon. It was such soon. a pleasure. Thank oh, you. Oh, my goodness. So congratulations to her. And, okay, we love to.